<clears throat> All right, let's see here. So it says just to write using exponents. So I'm not actually going to do 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. I'm just going to write 5 to the 4th power plus y squared. That plus sign stays. There's a plus in the middle. That plus has to stay. 5 to the 4th plus y squared. Does anybody know five to the fourth? I feel like maybe six twenty-five. One twenty-five times five. All right, next one. Nice and all on your groups. Tyler, what'd you get for number two? Four to the what? Four to the fifth. And then number. Three. What'd you get, Alicia? That's the third. Easy, easy warm up. Easy warm up. It's not bad. It's not bad. Just exponent. Just exponent. The whole chapter is exponent. There's no way you did anything better than this at 8.30 in the morning, dude. Uh, time well spent. All right, Gabriel, Gabriel, number four, what'd you get? Are there a n to the third power and b times e to the third power? Right. So this time we don't have a plus sign in the middle. It's all multiplication. You can keep a dot here, or you can um, mash them together. This is considered one term. This is called a monomial because there's no plus sign. Monomial. Whereas number one, when we had a plus sign in the middle, that's called a binomial. Because there's two terms. And if it was three, we can call it a trinomial. So this is a monomial because there's no plus sign, it's one term. And the next one, I'm going to keep the parentheses and I'm going to do one fifth to the sixth power. And that's the same as one to the sixth over 5 to the 6. Just an FYI. That means you do the top to that exponent and the bottom of the exponent. And so, I mean, 1 to the 6 has always just been 1, so 1 over 5 to the 6 yeah, is pretty good. good. Looks like a 56, though. Pretty frequent. Alright, so actually understanding the difference between a binomial and a monomial is a part of this, um, this lesson. So here's a, a pretty long definition for a monomial. It's not just about um, copying this definition down. It's about reading it and thinking about it and picking up the most important words. So if you could write this in order with the most important words, that's fine. And maybe you like examples. Like this is a monomial and this is a monomial because there's no plus sign. And that's just a regular fraction. So a mon you don't know what the words are, like you know what mono is? Yeah, one. Sometimes it's just no, what is that? No, mono and then what? Long story short, it's just one term, mono, one term. And this is the second rule that you you might not um, pick up on is that there can be more than one power. So two times 
um, some counter examples. Things that are not monomial. Like this is a binomial. And this appears to be a monomial. If I didn't know the definition, I would say that this is a monomial. But because there's a variable in the denominator, it's not. It's a part of the definition. <clears throat> so you'll be asked, I think you have six homework questions. Is this a monomial? Yes or no? So you might want to write down yes example, no example. And I'm going to do two problems. On a Oh, devices are not just back in the woods, bro. Why does it say devices are not just back? Like, if you're on path, uh, if you're active and on path, then that's a static on the device. Oh, okay. Probably also maybe not telling you that you're going to go in the front door. Yeah. Well, we find a all right, let's look at some examples about these monomials. Are we good? Good. Can we go back? No. All right, just, you don't have to answer these. You don't have to write anything down. It's just a product. There's no plus or minus sign. Letter C is a yes, and letter D is a no. Why is it a no, Will? Right. So look at the yes, and then look at the no. We got a four. Good. A C. No. You don't know what C is. All right, now do this one on your paper. A is correct. Are there any other monomials? A lot of wrong, a lot of wrong feedback. No, I thought we were like going down the chart and saying Yes or no, right? Let's do that. I'm down with that. No, that's good. That's yes, good. no, no, no. <laughs> that's it was a one choice. Yes. Thought I was going to do that. No, no, no. Yeah. Perfect, oh, perfect. Yeah. So why did you call this one a no, Dominic? Why is letter C a no? Yeah, um, because uh, the nine isn't on the uh, on the line. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a bare table underneath. Because there's a variable underneath. That might be so nice. Yeah, mine is. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no. <laughs> I'm not <gonna> <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to do
So why do we add exponents? Well, if I was to write out v to the third, it would look like this, right? And then write out v to the fifth, I would have five more. And then so all together, it makes eight. So rather than writing all of these out and counting them like we just did, you can just remember add the exponent. So when multiplying the same base, add exponent. All right, let's try some of these. <laughs> And it looks like a lot. The main thing I see is R4 times R7. So when I rewrite this, or you don't even have to show this, but multiply coefficient. And variable. So, like, there's a one in front of this r to the fourth that we can't see. So, when I do this, I'm going to do one times negative 12, and I'm going to do r to the fourth times r to the seventh. So, to multiply the coefficient here and here, one times negative 12, negative 12, and then I have four r's and seven r's. So, when you multiply the same base, you add them. So I'm going to do 4 plus 7, negative 12, r to the 11th. And you really don't have to show any work. So I, I showed a lot here, but if you're looking at that, like, okay, just add the 4 and the 7. You're right. You're right. All right, try that one. Wow. You're disappointed. Right? Sometimes you get a better Can you see Val? If I look at the same Val, I am so odd. What is she doing? That's why she's like, all I see right now is the same thing. 
Anybody willing to be honest and say that you have a five? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Those of you who um, admitted to it, good work. I mean, I see it all the time. Doing yourself and making that mistake now is good. That means you're learning on, on your first example. I got it easily. Did you like six or five
then you would multiply the number. Right. So, no. Or no, the, the, the exponent. The exponent. So that's, what you said is exactly what's confusing. You multiply the numbers in front, but you add the exponents. I have I have I have I I have I have I have I Oh, it's not more difficult, it's different. I think I'm going to 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 Oh, your mark That's a new camp. And the base is not repeated. Okay, Libby, Libby, can can you um you're communicating a lot. Let's see if you can communicate this. What's the difference between this? And this. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll be honest, I don't know. Alicia. Great. So this is three to the fifth power. This is an exponent raised to a power. So this is a power of a power. Three to the fifth. So this we will multiply, whereas this we will add. So that's why we get b to the 15. Because this would be like having, um, like five sets of these, right? And if you add all those up, you get the same thing. It's different than a product of powers. <sighs> Oh my god. 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 A lot of exponent. All right, you see, so basically, we don't see the base repeating, so we're going to multiply those exponents. It's actually 18. Give my 18. Thirty six. Like two hundred sixty. 
I thought it's literally 18 times. Oh, no, it's not. Libby, you are not like very good. I know, I can ask you questions all day long. Yeah. Oh, there it is. That's what I got. That's what I got. Alright, right, I'm gonna walk around and, and look at your letters again. If we don't practice at all, you'll get the two things confused. So it does require to know what we're doing. Oh my gosh, more? Oh. No! What? <laughs> Let's try this one. Are you? I don't even know how much we're coming.
All right, so here we go. Eight to the second power. This little two here goes to all of these little parts inside these parentheses. So I have G, three times two, H, four times two. And there's still another two on the outside. So I put this two here, here, and here. And now there's still this two on the outside. Over here, I can do that as well. I'll do the second part. I'm going to do two to the fourth, G to the fourth, H, five times four. So this four goes to the two. This is the one people forget. Two to the fourth. G to the fourth in H five times four. Oh, well, that blue color is a bummer. Okay. All right, so what's this, right? I'm going to go ahead, even though I've been leaving exponents to make this easier, I'm going to make that a 64. Does everybody agree? No. Uh, I didn't have to do that. You could have left it a squared. G to the fifth, H to the eighth. I'm sorry, six. And that all still has a two on the outside. Two to the four. G to the 4, H to the 20th. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this 2 into the parentheses as well. And there are other ways to show this work. This is just one way. 64 squared, G 6 times 2, H 8 times 2. And we still have 2 to the 4th, G to the 4th. H to the 20th. You guys, I want to go back. I wish I didn't make that a 64. Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. That was like a whole other language. That's a lot of letters. All right. So now we got 64 squared, G to the 12th, H to the 16th, 2 to the 4th, G to the 4th, H to the 20th. So we have G to the 12th times G to the 4th, we'll add those. H to the 16th times H to the 20th, we'll add those. We're almost done. 64 squared times 2 to the 4th, G to the 16th, H to the 36th. They think if you're going to continue in math or science, that this is an important learning block. Yeah. Okay, we can um, stop there. You guys can start your assignments. Oh, we can talk about it.